What's up, everyone? This is David, aka Reverse Long. Today, I'm here with Jiahui Lu, and uh, yeah, Jiahui Lu. And um, I met Jiahui Lu at the BSV conference in Dubai, which I was invited to by Coin Geek and Kurt Workert Jr. and Jack Pitts and all these really cool guys that I got to meet um, through the podcast. Uh, going further into my, at first, I was just wanted to go deeper into Bitcoin and to learn more about it. And then I, I stumbled upon uh, BSV and it was just very interesting to me how like uh, the whole BSV thing wasn't really talked about much. And um, there's a lot of correlations with like the creator of Bitcoin and the creator of Bitcoin, BSV. And like now we we know more or less who Satoshi is and like not people are not talking about it. So like when a situation like that happens, I like to go deeper and see what's going on. And when I had the opportunity to talk to these guys, really smart guys, this is not. So the thing is, so a lot of times without like me doing my own research and digging into BSV, uh, whenever I mentioned it to someone in crypto, they kind of didn't know about it or they didn't know about the Satoshi stuff going on. And I I happen to like have access to really smart people through the podcast and to like just be curious and go through it with, with a clear mind because I really have no crypto positions. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a trader. I'm a short selling trader. I'm actually a bear, like a super bear. I'm looking to, for fraud. I, that's what I do. I look for fraud. I look for suspicious activity in a stock and I, I investigate it. And uh, when I looked into BSV, I didn't go in with any of that. I just was going in super objective and Jack Pitts, who I interviewed about with the BSV that was explaining to me about BSV and about tulip mania and all wall street history. It was this great, great podcast. Um, he was a former hedge fund manager, uh, Navy submarine commander. You know, you got Kurt, super smart. These are really smart people. And then we got Xiaohui over here, which did an amazing presentation at the BSV conference. And it's just a super smart guy. Uh, and we, we we networked over there. We, co- we, uh, we connected and uh, I invited him on the podcast. And so here he is. But I just wanted to, well, before we start... I just wanted to give an introduction. These these are really smart people. I'm I'm so surprised how like BSV is not being more talked about. You know what I mean? This is like so, someone really needs to bring BSV out to the forefront and like at least bring some attention or see what's going on more in depth because there's really a no not that much awareness as as there should be. But anyway, besides that, um, here we got Zhao Hui Lu. And uh, get a little background on him and everything, which is really interesting. Um, well, with all that being said, Yahoo, how are you doing, man? Very good, very good. I mean, uh, it's perfect weather, you know, we're in California, so it's not too hot. So like everywhere else, so pretty good. Yeah. Not, not as hot as Dubai, for sure. So. Yeah, Dubai was, was incredibly hot, man. When we were there, uh, I got sunburned. I went to the pool of my friend's apartment there. I had a friend that lives there, an Italian friend. Oh, I think you met him. And uh, and we went to the pool. I got burned in like 20 minutes. Like, wow. wow. It, it, the sun there is like, it's a different kind of sun than California. It's like, different. very, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, it was cool to, to meet with you over there. That The conference was really, really well done. Um, yeah, it's, it's great stuff, you know. But yeah, we wanted to get like um, maybe more of a background to get people to be to know more a little bit more about you and your background before we get started on on uh, all the stuff that you covered at the conference and more, you know. So yeah, I heard you were like in Facebook and computer mm-hmm. and all that. So yeah, you want to just uh, yeah give a background? Yeah, I mean my background is pretty like a standard, uh, you know, like a course for a lot of uh, you know people. Just uh, you know, I went to you know, college, and then like I did my PhD also in computers. So I'm always interested in computers and uh, trying to hack things, to, trying to build all kinds of things. So then when I, uh, I did finish my PhD, I so I went to Facebook, you know, as a research scientist, I was doing some research in uh, kind of like uh, the distributed networking in the kind of like a Google X equivalent called the connectivity lab. So I was kind of doing a uh, over research over there, but also, you know, like everybody else, maybe hacker in the, in the valley, Silicon Valley, always, you know, trying to see what's going on, you know, have some kind of like a semi, like a side project hustling going on, you know, just to just to browse different things, what's going on, right, besides the day job. So then I was getting more and more into the, I mean, 
back then people more people got the blockchain you know less than uh, crypto because it's still a more like uh, tech driven i think uh, i i had some friend you know he was very early into the crypto even earlier i think in 2013 or something he went there he was doing all kinds of mining at the beginning because he, he was even earlier than you know getting into early of some of the ethereum you know crowd and also the repo xrp and all kinds of coins he was doing mining so we kind of mining together for all kinds of altcoins just in our garage i think it's not for for profit because you know electricity here is crazy price right so it's probably doesn't make financial sense but it's just to explore what's the tech uh, behind it and then i was like getting more and more spending more and more time you know the, the, doing a little bit of mining but also research into this thing because it's very uh this is the only field i know you're kind of like uh because usually you talk about tech and finance it's very like a separate right but but here is it's almost the you know when when people say crypto currency right or, or coin it's almost like the the coins are like an inherent part of the, the whole package so you cannot talk one without the, the economics or the finance side of thing. So it's almost like uh, if you are just mining something in your garage, you almost feel you are like uh, living in the future. We're almost uh, kind of like a dream where the money grows on the tree. You see what I mean? So you want yeah. really want to, it's not something you just do some computation or, or your, you know, cloud machine or something. It's, it's uh, something of value. You are just by doing some computation, you can, you can pretty much, uh, you are, you're almost like a Federal Reserve. You're like a mini money at your garage, in your garage. So that's why I kind of get very interested, not only the tax side, but also how does the economic side working? So I then spend more and more time and it turns out, you know, I, I was, I think at, like at one point I was spending most of the time instead of working on my day job, I'm kind of like a research and uh, doing all kinds of experiments in crypto. That, that, that's why I decided, okay, it's, only time for me to leave. So then, and then that was like a peak of the ICO boom, 2017. So I feel, okay, this is probably some, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but it seems there's something very exciting going on. So I just, you know, quit Facebook and then just head into crypto. I think at the beginning I was doing uh, all kinds of crazy things, you know, everything you can think about, like mining altcoins. I was all, at one point I was doing ODC, peer-to-peer uh, -peer off off offline exchange, and also doing some um, uh, gaming on, on chain, kind of like uh, Satoshi Dice. I, I don't know, it's one of the very earlier Bitcoin games. Basically you're playing dice, but uh, with a Bitcoin. Wow. So, yeah, but so then I was gradually uh, trying all kinds of different blockchains, right? Because when you build something, this thing has to work, right? It's not just we are arguing about it, we have to talk about it. You have to interact with the chain. And then, you know, with, it's almost like a trial and error thing. I've almost tried all kinds of different chains before I really settled into Bitcoin. You know, when I say Bitcoin, it's always meaning BSV, but we can talk more about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, you did all this while you were working with Facebook, like outside of Facebook, you would, you would work on this on your own? Yes, I think I was trying to all kinds of different projects and uh, it's just, um, most of them, you know, of course, did not work, not surprisingly, because of all the underlying blockchains, they, they just, it's impossible to succeed, right? Either you have very low user volume traffic, or you go, go viral, you went viral, but then the fee is going to skyrocket. So either way, you are dead. There's no way you, you get out of the, the, the uh, altcoins, I would say. Gotcha. Okay, so then how did you get connected with like uh, Satoshi, aka Dr. Craig, right? Because I saw, you know, I saw a couple of podcasts with you um, on YouTube and like you have like these courses that I think you do with Dr. Craig Wright and like they're pretty intense. And um, yeah, what's that about? How did you get connected? Because I met Dr. Craig Wright at the conference and that, that was cool to see him there, man. It's like when, mm -hmm. when everybody starts giving him more credit, it's going to be insane. Like I have a photo with the guy, you know, so it's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> but um but can you explain how that started and how much impact he had on you uh for your s s crypt and for everything that you're doing you know how much impact and and influence did dr craig Wright had because you have a direct relationship with him mm -hmm. yeah it's uh 
I, I think I, I feel almost like lucky and uh, a privilege to have to, you know, have a personal relationship with him. Basically, the, it all started with like 2018. So, be, you know, at the end of 2017, I, I quit and then I was doing all kinds of projects, right? Uh, doing, and then I got uh, just by pure chance, I, I think that's one friend in Hong Kong. He was having this huge blockchain conference with like thousands of people. And then he just said, hey, uh, uh, can you join there? I was I flew to Hong Kong, and then one of the another speaker by chance is just uh, Craig. He was there, and we we kind of like uh, I I heard about him always, but in the news. But then it's the first time you, you just see the person. It's it's just uh, it's a little bit different to say the least than what uh, if you if you only see him in the news or the, some videos because, and then. You know, you heard about all the controversy because for me, I, I think we are kind of similar because for me, I, I don't want to just, you know, trust somebody else to, to do the research for me. I have to see what, what is the fuss about this guy. But somehow, you know, it's always like a negative, negative. But I, if I talk to this guy in person, it it's, feels totally different. You almost like, uh, you know, but this maybe a little, little bit like political, but almost like uh, maybe the news is not always, you know, true, right? So that's because of, you know, into a little bit of fake news before. So I was trying to do, you know, I just want to know what, what is the, what is the real, what's the truth behind this man? So I was just, when I came back from Hong Kong, I was just doing some research, like uh, what you are probably you are experiencing now. I, it's like a rabbit hole. And once you get into it, there's no coming back. And then I heard, uh, I, I pretty much spent uh, almost like a couple of months, I mean, doing nothing but research into, you know, what's the original Bitcoin, the story, and uh, what has uh, Craig has done, you know, then that's, I discovered all his writings, all his patterns. So, because for me, I'm, I'm kind of like coming from the academic background, because I have a PhD in, you know, computer science, I can read and understand, if not all, the most of the patterns, because for me, that's to me personally, that's a de definitive proof. You know, he's either Satoshi or he knows about Bitcoin better than anybody else out there, which in both cases, right, that doesn't matter to me, right? Because he knows Bitcoin best. And you look at the 500 patterns, it's still accumulating. There's no way, there's no way to, to me, I'm like, I read this pattern almost every day and he's generating more. So that's to me, to me, that's no doubt, yes. You know, Xiaohui, it's it's very good to hear you say that. And like, for you know, I was in Dubai, heard a lot. I, it's hard for me to explain because I'm not a computer scientist. I'm not like, uh, you, you know, I, I'm I'm a trader of, of stocks and I short sell and I do research a different way and everything. But to hear you say that, okay, so this is the reason why you think that he is Satoshi. Because like, whenever I try to explain it to people, I'm like, okay, I don't, you know, the way I see it, people kind of don't, they don't really they're like oh yeah yeah whatever that's they they kind of believe the fake news you know what i mean um they, it's like they don't even have a, a reason for it they just like say yeah. oh he's fake that, that that's it mm -hmm. it's like that's all that's where it stops so to hear you say okay so there's a lot of patterns and that combinations that you, with bitcoin or the blockchain or whatever that it's like it's almost impossible basically impossible for anyone else to do it or know about it except him and he has all the every all he has the stuff to support that. Yeah, another analogy, if, I, if you just want to convince like a normal people, I think average Joe on the street, to me is, you know, you can have, you know, a lot of people there are saying, uh, how do you prove you are somebody, right? One way to do it, right? A lot of crypto, especially the crypto guys, they think proof of keys, right? I mean, we, have, we, we know the counter argument, right? Because if I have keys to a house, right? Do I own your house? Am I you? Probably not, right? Because, you know, Possession of keys is not a proof of identity, right? But there are other ways to prove, right? It's not only one way to prove your identity. There are many, many other ways to prove who, uh, who you are, who you are saying you are, right? Like let's say you are David. Right? How do you prove? I mean, you can sign it, but you have all other ways, alternative ways to to prove, right? For example, you know, I think the one of the most I think everybody probably get this is proof of knowledge, right? So if I, let's say you are David, right? And uh, I'm, I'm just say I'm like a family member of you, right? So how do I, you know, maybe I get a call, you say you are David. 
How do you sure? How am I making sure you are David? Right? Then I can ask a lot of things, right? Only David personally knows, right? So if I ask one question, you know it? I say, hey, hey David, do you remember when we last hang out, which restaurant it is? On October 2nd, 2019, right? I mean, maybe you can guess one, right? But then I ask you like a thousand such questions and you get all of them right. And then I might conclude who, you are really David or you are saying, hey, you haven't signed for me. So you are not David, right? So proof of knowledge, that's no, it's to me, I think one of the best convincing example. Same comes yeah. back to my knowledge, right? So yeah. if this guy, I just say, hey, is Craig Sotachi? I'm not sure I have, he hasn't signed for me in private, right? How do I know? So, but then if I'm asking him all the Bitcoin questions and every single time he gets it right, not only he gets right, every other so-called expert gets it wrong. So what are the chances after 1,000 such incidents, what's the probability he's not Satoshi, right? He's diminishing it yeah. exponentially. Absolutely. Absolutely. In is, is uh, virtually impossible, right? Awesome. I love that explanation. Um, okay. And then how did, did Dr. Craig Wright, uh, what were you accomplishing with those like classes? Were you, I didn't really look too deep into it. Were you giving like a class with Dr. Craig Wright for anyone that wanted to attend or was he teaching you or what was going yeah. on? You can, you can think of almost like, uh, like uh, he's, you know, Craig, he's, he's like, uh, you know, he's expert in almost like a uh, hundred areas, but he's, he's so broad and he knows so much. So he kind of assume everybody knows as much as he do. So when he talk about things, I think a lot of times when people fail to understand him, one of the biggest reasons is he, he kind of uh, talking very like a uh, high level and abstract way. And uh, for a lot of people, they, they don't have the background. So they just immediately dismiss it. They call it the tech noble. So, so I'm like almost like his disciple. So, because uh -huh. he, so I'm trying to translate what he's saying into like a, uh, let's say more developer friendly language. He's saying, let's say for example, he's saying, hey, you could do the, you know, let's say SPV, right? The simple <laughs> payment verification. So then I was, then I can translate it to more like a developer friendly. I can have some sample code. I can write some articles. You know, then so more people can read it and then understand his idea. But that's the, the idea is always coming from him. And so, same for Escape. I think for so basically, right now I'm working on a project called Escape. So if, for if you, if, for like uh, outside, for people outside of, uh, you know, BSV, if you heard about uh, JavaScript or even if you're in Ethereum, you heard about Solidity. That's like an equivalent. Basically, it's a way when you, so Bitcoin, think about not on, only is a, is a blockchain, but also is a, think about it as like an application platform. It's almost like an like a iPhone or Android. You can build apps, on, but how do you code these apps? So in web apps, right, you use JavaScript. You know, in Bitcoin, you use Escript. But the, the before Escript, the, you know, the capability is always there since one day one. That's why when, I mean, we can talk about it later, but when we say BSV, we, we just think it's Bitcoin because, you know, if you look at the objective metrics, you know, you compare the, the oldest Bitcoin with the latest BSV, it's almost identical. But if you compare to many other so-called, uh, you know, what the market says, the BTC is totally different animals, totally different. So the, the short story is the so-called smart contract, right? Capabilities all was already in Bitcoin since day one. It's not added sometime later when Satoshi first launched it. The first node is already there. But the problem is, you know, it's kind of like a, you can think of you can only program in like assembly or like a bytecode. It's very low level computer code, but it's not a very developer friendly. And then the ASCO is like high level language. It, it kind of like add one layer up. So you can translate it to all this low level uh, Bitcoin code, but you don't have to know anything about Bitcoin itself. You can just write the modern smart contract in like a JavaScript like a language. So that's why I think uh, more and more people uh, know about this. And also that's my talk in, in Dubai, just showing, hey, not only you can do a lot of smart contracts, but you can do actual smart contract and it's much cheaper and more scalable. So if you have a blockchain, 
that can does everything, can do everything other blockchains can do, much cheaper, everything better. So that then that begs the question, right? Why do you need 30,000 other blockchains at all, right? I think that yeah. then it all leads back to why I think BSV is not that talked about in the crypto space, right? Yeah, and that's where where I everything made sense to me. So okay, so the the exchanges don't want this on because it's going to eliminate a lot of trading. Like with stocks, I know the brokers and the the players, uh, the bigger players involved, they make their money with commissions and with trading activity. If there was less trading activity and less things being traded, they're not going to make any money. So these exchanges like FTX, it makes or, or example. Um, of course, if, if they if they list Bic, BSV and BSV does Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a lot of other things combined in one, that's going to uh, reduce trading activity and that's less money for the exchange and that's less activity, just trading activity in general. So it's like, uh, you, you know, so it, it makes sense to me. And, and also, you know, it always, I always was curious, like, why can't Bitcoin do what Ethereum does? Or why can't this, so it made sense when like, okay, actually BSV is the Bitcoin and it's it's supposed to do all of that. Uh, then it's like, oh, right, I understand now. And then I'm, I'm when, when I went to Dubai, everything clicked, you know, um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a real diamond in the rough. I really, you know, I think so. You know what I mean? This is, this is, uh, I even said in another podcast, I mean, you don't, you don't got to comment on it, but the, you know, because like it's in, in my, <laughs> but my job is as a bear mindset guy, like I, I try to see these things or try to anticipate it the best I can, like a Luna happening again. If, if people knew about this, there'll be another Luna or something similar. It's, it's really crazy, but that's a whole nother topic. But, um, with Bitcoin, Luna with Bitcoin, you know, something like that, but, uh, <laughs> But that's a whole other topic. But anyway, um, I wanted to talk. Okay, so if you can explain more a little bit how like BSV uh, does like what Bitcoin can do in Ethereum, like it, there's less gas, less gas fees. It's just more efficient. And then you're doing S script, which like it helps with the applications, I guess, uh, put applications on BSV to make it useful. So like what you're doing is very important because you're you're gonna make BSV being able to use for everybody and make you right is that is that what was going yes. on yes so think about as as we uh, think we mentioned earlier a little bit so think not on bitcoin not think about it's only for payment right that's just it's like saying hey iphone you can only use it for calling your friend right i mean you can do it but that's not where the most power coming from right it's because of the app store you know iphone only you know you know, based like a Nokia and all the BlackBerry because of that, you can build all kinds of apps. You cannot, you can, if you only, you can, if you can just call your mom, right? Probably it will not take off. It's the same thing here. I think that's the one, the first, you know, big application that like just for payment, but it's much more than that. It has a whole, you can almost think about like a iOS building since day one. So people now, I think they're using a lot of a, like a payment related, especially for micro payment. But another big dimension is, unexplored uh, or like underexplored is the, the programming capability of the Bitcoin uh, machine. So if you want to use the full power of Bitcoin machine, you can, you know, S script is like your, it's almost like Swift right? or Java or JavaScript. You can program all these uh, fancy, more sophisticated applications, which usually people regard not, you cannot do on Bitcoin, but as I show, right, if you watch the Dubai and uh, many of my previous, you know, demonstrations, I'm not, I'm just not just saying it, I'm actually running it. It's on the mainnet. You can get the code, you can, you can run it, you can test it for self. You don't have to trust me. Everything I have done is already always like uh, open source and I have all the code and samples. You can just go there and, uh, you know, play with it. So, in Dubai, I showed a few examples, right? We, you can do so-called uh, taproot, right? That's like almost like the number one feature that's held by BTC people. And also you can do Schnorr signature, which also is a big thing on BTC. But uh, you can also do ring signature, meaning like uh, Monero, that's like uh, the number one feature. But uh, also you can do so-called zero knowledge, which is like uh, what enables Zcash. So you can also, so basically I'm like showing for all the major uh, cryptocurrencies, I'm showing how to do it on big original Bitcoin one by one. So you can th almost think about like a, 
I'm just going out there. It's almost like a, I think about like a death river, you know, have a big, <laughs> you know, have a big knife. I just, I just want to go out and then just show people, hey, you can do every other big uh, coin on, on the original Bitcoin. And it's much cheaper, right? You can look at the fees and because of the scalability, right? I think we mentioned a little bit uh, when we were talking at Dubai. Yeah. It's just more inherently, it's more scalable than any other blockchain out there because of the, the, the design decision, I think it's Satoshi made at the beginning. So it's not something, it's not like a, you think about Bitcoin, I think about it, it's almost like a, a jet, you know, airplane, right? So, you know, other blockchain I think about is either like a horse carriage or cars, right? I mean, you know, it's just fundamental the designs make sure that the planes are always going to fly much, much faster than just something runs on the ground because, you know, aerodynamics yeah. and, uh, you know, all the, it, because of physics, same thing for here, because when you made the few design decisions, it's pretty much bound. The how, how much scalability you can reach is bound. Like Ethereum, right? They, they made the decision to use so-called account model. I think, I think I talked about it a little bit earlier before. The thing about Ethereum, right? The way I think about it, you have a big, you know, uh, uh, spreadsheet, you know, everybody has an account there, right? And then you have your balance. But then when you run the smart contract, you change, you, let's say Alice sending some ether from to five ether to, to Bob, and then Bob sent to, you know, Charlie, who, who, whoever. But then the, the, the problem here is, I think if you, uh, you can only do it sequentially. Basically, you have to, the whole spreadsheet, you cannot have Alice and Bob modify at the same time, right? Because then you can have conflict, right? And what if I modify my balance and then Bob also mo modify my balance, right? Then it's not going good, right? Because then there's, it's monetary value, right? You don't want to have conflict in the spreadsheet, right? So on, at one time, only one person can send it, meaning you can do only one transaction at a single time versus Bitcoin, it's like a cash, right? So let, you imagine we all have, you know, US dollars. I mean, I can pay my merchant, you can pay your merchant, your merchant can pay his supply. It doesn't, it's, it doesn't interfere, right? It's every dollar, it's, think about it, independence. So there's no upper limit. It's more scalable by design. It's like airplane, right? It's just supposed to fly super fast. And, and you feel like a car, doesn't matter how much you tune the wheels, you add bells and whistles, it's just not going to catch up like a modern jet, jet line. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes absolute sense. Um, yeah, the way you broke it down is pretty, pretty, very straightforward. Very good. Um, okay, so to start to wrap it up, Xiaohui, so what, what uh, latest projects are you working on with S-Script or what do you have that you want people maybe to know about through the podcast or and and yeah just in general how would you approach uh learning more about all this yeah very good question i think as a big uh, i think all the materials uh, is public out there i think uh, it's just about the number one thing I, I i can think of for anybody who's listening or watching it's like uh, be like david okay be open-minded and do your own research because as a it's like a crypto is almost like a microcosmos of whole society, right? So how many times you look at like a headline, you know, you read some news and then somehow it's talking about the field you are in, right? You are expert. Let's say you are like a, you are like a trader, great trader like David, right? Then you watch some random website and give this headline. It somehow falls into your, your expertise. What are the chances that headline is true? My personal experience is, is just, it's not uh, for, for a lot of time, it's, it's not right. It's so, misleading. Uh, uh, they're, dis they're actually designed, whoever makes the headline designs it to hide, not mention. They, they don't specifically lie all the time. Mm -hmm. but they, they just leave certain things out and they mislead it. It's very misleading. 90% yeah. of the time, it's misleading. Yes. So same for, for crypto, right? And, and what makes it even worse, because... There's money involved, right? It's just not a lose some argument with some like random, you know, people on Twitter, right? I don't care. But now my coin, right? I'm, I'm shitting, everybody's shitting their own coin. But if my coin claps, I can really lose real money. So that makes it even worse. So, so it's like you, you, you previously said, right? We don't have to go to like a conspiracy theories because 
if you can explain by incentive, right? For example, all this exchange, let's say Coinbase. Why does coin why does Coinbase list like I don't know hundreds of coins? And the only coin, if you look at the top 100, they probably have nine, 99 of them, right? The only exception is the real Bitcoin. So why is that, right? Because you mentioned a few good example why is right? Because it, it just uh, it just uh, you know plays the whole business model into question, right? Why do I, yeah. if I one coin can do that them all? Why do you need you know shuffling between all these hundreds of pairs or even thousands of pairs of coin other than just to make money, right? It doesn't make sense. So that's number one thing. Just you know, go out there. Don't trust anybody. Just uh, I know the kind of the noise ratio is a little bit high. So just go to the BitcoinSV.io or you know BitcoinSV.com. Starting from there or CoinGeek.com. That's a good reference to go. And just just see all the arguments on all the data. And just verify it. and also you know get a few applicate apps on Big BSV like Handcash. You know, download the wallet, you try it for yourself. How, how, how big is the fee? Do you have to wait, right? All of those things, it's like, uh, you know, you don't have to trust any of us, right? You can just independently verify and then try some other coin, right? BDC to see how, what kind of things you can do and then compare them. You can always, almost sure to find, okay, somehow the experience on BSV is almost superior. And, that, and for us is, it's just uh, the the cryptos. We are we are almost like the antithesis of the whole crypto, right? Because you you know you are being in Dubai, you are at the Bitcoin, you know we call it Bitcoin conference. I I don't remember any single one who's uh, worried about the price or talking about the price. But if you go to like a BTC Miami, it's probably different. That's probably the only thing they talk about. So we are always talking about utility. How do you, to take is the tool, right? It's the technology. How do you enable use this technology, this tool to build all kind of a to to bring values to people's real lives, right? So, so that's, that's a for us. Is uh, it's just to not trying to like argue or convince people from other blockchains. I think that's very hard for us. Is then to build things that work. So hopefully people can say, hey, I don't, I don't even care. Right? I use this app. I can you know, pay my supplier, or I can use this uh, S script to, to build all kinds of, uh, you know, so-called uh, dApps. I don't like the word, but uh, that's what people call decentralized apps. But if you can build the same thing, but it's just cheaper and never gets, gets stuck your transaction. It just runs smooth. Then hopefully more people and just get on board. So that's, that's why I don't try to worry too much about the other blockchains, because to me, it's like, uh, they're not even trying to compete in this, they're like doing all kinds of like, a, you know, things we think is crazy, like a proof of stake and the lightning. We, we know from design, it will not work, right? So we don't worry about that. So we are more like a people, you know, on the street, you know, average 7 billion people. How do we, how do we build things those people can benefit from? I think that's the invention how BSV can win. And uh, I'm very, you know, bullish, you know, even the market, I, yeah, for me, it's almost like, a, almost living a okay. cave for me. And was, every day I wake up, you know, I just do my thing. Uh, I, I barely even watch the, the market. And also the, you know, I've never heard about Tuna. No, Tuna, frankly, before it collapsed. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, that's I actually, I like same here. Actually, same here. I kind of really? heard, heard about it a little bit, but not too much. Um, I heard, uh, Six months or so ago, a, a big short seller with stocks was mentioning he was asking for people to give him information. Uh, if, if they heard about it, to message him and give him information on Tether and and Luna Terra and stuff because he he found like suspicious things with them. So that so like it raised a lot of red flags to a lot of short seller community of people, not just stocks, but everything in general. It's just it was just like too good to be true. Um, what they were a lot of what they were doing and it was just like some holes and somebody found some holes in it and exploited it and look what happened you know mm -hmm. so same for three ac and uh yeah i'm like i'm the least crypto people in the crypto economy probably because yeah <laughs> I don't follow all this uh you know the crazy news because to me if i'm in opposition because i'm like pretty much shorting everything else right I'm <laughs> yeah so everything else to me is going to crash just a yeah. bit of time. It, yeah. It, because 
it, it's like a, you know, you are now, you are like a shooting a, you know, the, uh, you know, a, a horse or a car into the air, right? Yeah. It's going to fall back to earth. It's not Eventually. like an airplane. It's not it's designed a, to fly. It's just you know, a metal plan. Like, um, so Jack, Jack Pitts, he, when, when we did a second podcast, he, we were talking about that and how like he was a, a hedge fund manager in 1999, 2000 era where the stocks all went crazy because of the internet boom and then it all crashed. So we were, he was explaining that so, so, so perfectly how like the correlation between that time and now and how a lot of the internet stocks from back then, they, they went away for good. Only the, you, you see Amazon and things like that stayed. Yes. You no, know, but uh, so like the same thing is gonna happen again. You know, so there's a. I think Mark Twain says history doesn't repeat, but mm -hmm. it it rhymes. Yes, that's how. You know, so, because, yeah, that's, well, human nature doesn't. Human nature doesn't. Same. Yeah, in, it, in it stays years, the right? same. It's crazy. Um, 1920s, just a hundred years ago, it was kind of the same thing going on. You had a big boom, you, everybody was yeah. happy, and then the crash came. You know, Even a few hundred years ago, right? If you watch, uh, you know, Craig's talk about the tulip trust. Tulip right? mania. I have a, a tulip painting on my on my oh, wall okay. over here. I have the ch the chart. <laughs> and with the if if you've seen the movie Wall Street with Gordon Gecko and all that, I don't know if you saw it, but he he, he had a painting of the tulip mania, and I I ordered the same one. It's right here. I, I see it every day. It reminds me. I've been staring at this chart uh for two three years now, every day, <laughs> and then now it's coming. You know, it's finally doing what it's supposed yeah i don't know whatever yeah, yeah but, uh, just, the market is going to take we don't know how long it's going to correct but uh eventually right it's like eventually. Gravity. you cannot defy gravity it's just maybe sometime you can shoot it faster you land it a little bit later but sooner or later is if it's not airplane it's going to crash and uh and, and part of that i think that the truth is always going to come out like i mentioned in another podcast it's like um if satoshi really is satoshi or doctor then the world's going to find out one way or another. You can't deny it. Like everything that you said and everything, the truth always finds a way to come out. If BSV really is all, all, all it's doing, then the, the, it's going to come out, you know? And then when, when it comes out, uh, you know, and then like, it's like Amazon, Amazon. Um, Jack was telling me, Jack Pitts, uh, like it started at like $3 and it went to 20, then it fell back to $6 and it's like, look at it now, you know, it's, it's, it was real. You can't, deny. and then not only was it real, but it, it, they started with books. So then they developed, they started with books and the internet and then look at it now. It's just, they do all types of things. And they started with that one concept on the technology of the internet. And now you have web three and you have like all the stuff that you mentioned and yeah, you know, so eventually everything is, it's, it's like a correction or a flush. And it's gonna get a like a purge, you know. So, mm -hmm. and yeah, <laughs> that's, that's why I don't I don't, you know, put too much of attention on other blockchains. But of course, I, I look at the tech side of things because I want to see hey, what are the blocks other blockchains to do. And uh, you know, for me, um, I think we are a little bit of a similar because you are always looking at the stocks. And you're trying to see how hey, is this legit? You know, for me, I'm always yeah. talking to other blockchains competitors. So I want to see hey. Is uh if you know lightning is does it make sense and uh, is the uh, roll up does it make sense? But then always I find out is uh, you know if it's not Bitcoin if I do my research deep enough, some something at the lowest level it doesn't add up. It's like uh you know lightning or you know segwit. You always find something you know out outside of the hype right? Because if you look at just random Google some news or on Twitter, it's all like. Uh, you know, the change the world is going to take uh, Ethereum to one minute transaction per second, or it's going to have a, a whole country is going to adopt a big BTC. And then you do your math, you do your fundamental research, it, it's never going to work. So that's how I feel very confident about, about Bitcoin. You know, it's just, I try to focus my energy. And that's also my message. I try to not do, you know, to to this my competitors, I just do what I do and just uh, yeah have every I yeah. think we ship code and ship uh, you know educational videos like this and also we publish almost like every week we publish good articles text articles and a lot of people I think it's I feel the the tide is kind of like a turning because if you look at the all the people who's new into BSV especially in Dubai right I think usually I I go to 
BSV or Bitcoin conference before. I think most people, if I don't, I'm not personally, you know, friends with them. At least I've seen the face. But in Dubai, it's the first time I've seen so many new faces like you, right? You've never been, and you were there with like a thousand people, right? <laughs> so yeah. one of the other people. So I think it's a, it's, it's still, I think a tough road. We are like fighting the uphill because I can easily, you know, switch to another blockchain and say, hey, we can do this, do that. And then maybe get some coins. I can issue my token, it's going to pump. And I may become a little bit richer than what I'm now, but then at the end of the day, right? You are trying to build something and for people to use because otherwise you know, if you just pump some coins, Actually, you are like zero sum, right? You are taking some people's, you know, savings or pensions fund, right? To buy like a 50 million yard, which now you cannot afford, right? Like a three AC guy. So I kind of feel like, uh, you know, the, the whole space needs to be cleaned up. I think that's why I, uh, I think you try to just, just build useful things. It's like I would try to, to be Amazon, right? Try not to be pet, petfood.com or yeah. try to build or- things. You know, there was, there, there was one called laundrymat.com. That one went to like from a dollar to like a thousand dollars or something. Then it crashed just because laundry.com doesn't do anything. <laughs> so, you know, that's 1999. It's it's happening again, you know, so a lot of correlation. But yeah, with all that, Xiaohui, man, it was very good to connect with you on here. And uh, hopefully in the near future, um, we can touch base again and see what you got going on. Um, it's really cool and exciting that, you know, what, what you're doing in this space and uh, and for all the right reasons, like you said, all, the, the conference was really well done. I've been to a, a few Bitcoin conferences, all types um, in crypto, whatever. And this was that was my favorite one for sure. For sure. Okay. It was it was it was the best one. And uh, you guys are doing uh, all, for everything for all the right reasons, man. You know, it's it's. Um, okay. Yeah, it's it's good stuff, and it, people need to know about what's going on more, or like at least listed on on the exchanges. Let the people figure it out, you know. So, um, but yeah, I look, I look forward to having more of you guys on on the podcast, like Jack, Kurt, and and you, man, you guys are great. Okay. So yeah. Oh, anyways, what? Well, thanks so so much for coming on. And uh, how can people find you if they wanna if they wanna get in touch? Yeah, just go to the one one website called askscript.io. I hopefully you can link in the yeah. Don't know. You can find everything there. Subscribe to our blog. I, we publish. I think we are one of the most, if not the most, uh, productive, uh, you know, technical blog out there. Maybe not only in BSV, but maybe in the whole crypto space. So definitely check it out if you are crypto, uh, like a tech focus. But also you can follow all our social media, Twitter. You know, join our Slack, Telegram. We have all the updates constantly. And uh, lastly, I really want to thank David because yeah, like open money, you just don't follow the, you know, the hype. You look what's going on. So I, I encourage more people to be like David. So thanks, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Well, awesome, Xiaoyi, man. Great having you on. Thanks again, and uh, we'll talk soon. Have a okay. great day. Have a nice day. Okay. Bye. See you again. Bye bye.